Thanks, Deputy Speaker. I'll just say at the outset I do accept that you can't call the Prime Minister a liar. That's unparliamentary, and so I won't do that. Our order. The member for Bruce will withdraw that and commence that again, please. It's a statement of fact. I'm not allowed to. But if I it assists would, the chair, I withdraw you. that. It is strange, though, isn't it? It is strange. Even when the entire country is saying just that. You couldn't read out the headlines in most of the newspapers in this chamber. Um, they're calling into question the Prime Minister's pattern of a loose relationship with the truth. That is parliamentary, well established. Um, here we must use nicer words. We can say untruth, we can say falsehoods, we can say a pattern of mendacity, or as Winston Churchill famously said, to get around this very problem, terminological in inexactitude. A bit of rhyming slang apparently is okay. The old Bob Cryer, Dunlop Tyre, sounds like flyer. But it is beyond question that the government is led by a man regularly observed as falsifying, misleading, avoiding, deceiving, dissembling and double-dealing, making stuff up in common parlance. Now, I've read the practice. You can't make imputations on character or motive, but you can observe on the behaviours. That's entirely parliamentary. But there are real-world consequences to the Prime Minister's pattern of behaviour, or factual inaccuracies, if we want to be neutral. The Prime Minister told Australians that we were at the front of the queue for vaccines, but that wasn't true, was it, Deputy Speaker? We were last in the developed world. Months of lockdowns Australians endured because of this guy's spin and marketing. The Prime Minister told yeah, Australians that he'd deliver higher real wages, his but that's not true. The Prime Minister last year presided over an economy where real wages fell by $700. In his first six years in government, when he was the Treasurer, real wages in this country went backwards under this government, backwards, near last in the developed world. He told journalists he wasn't on holiday in Hawaii, but that's exactly where he was. Wasn't true, was it? The Prime Minister claims he's opposed to mandatory vaccinations, except that's not true either, is it? He's imposed them on aged care workers, Australians returning home, quarantine workers. Even journalists who attend his press conferences have to be vaccinated. The Prime Minister says Labor's always higher taxing and higher spending and Liberals are lower, except the two highest taxing, higher spending governments in the last 30 years have been Liberal governments. Some of his untruths are just weird, though, aren't they? He forgets that the television records things and you can watch it. He didn't ridicule electric vehicle technology, he said, except he said they'd end the weekend, wouldn't tow a trailer and stop Australians going camping. He said he didn't support Clive Palmer's challenge to the Western Australian borders, except he spent a million dollars of taxpayer money doing just that. He said he never said Shanghai Sam, but he said it 17 times on 11 occasions. How can Australians trust anything that comes out of this Prime Minister's mouth, given his record of falsehoods, day after day Order after day?